Another Thanksgiving is around the corner and you're about to smoke a turkey. I'm gonna tell you that I've spent the last years perfecting my turkey recipes. And I have a couple methods that I'd like to share with you. Today, we're gonna to be spatchcocking this turkey. We did a couple special things like a dry brine. We're gonna be injecting, we're gonna be seasoning, and I'm gonna share all of those steps and my success stories with you along the way. But enough talking, let's dive right into it. When it comes to smoking a turkey, the first question that you've got to ask yourself is, do I want that picture-perfect Thanksgiving presentation, or do I want the juiciest and the best turkey that I can possibly make? Now, what I found is that spatchcocking gives you that juicy bird, and it cooks a lot faster and a lot more evenly. So that's what we're going to be doing today with this turkey. Now, I have a 13 and a half pound turkey. This was frozen, got it at Giant Eagle. Now we did a dry brine on this turkey. It was about a 16 hour dry brine overnight. We used some Lowry's garlic salt, put it on a wire rack and put it in the refrigerator overnight. Now what I've found with a dry brine is that it helps produce the crispiest skin. Now I do like a good wet brine, but the skin is typically a little on the rubbery side unless you jack the temperature way up. So for this one, we did a dry brine. Now it's time to spatchcock it. So the best thing for you to do is get yourself a good pair of poultry shears put a link down in the description. But what you need to do is basically cut the back out. About an inch and a half to two inches of the back, you're gonna cut to the left and to the right of the spine. Now a good pair of poultry scissors will be able to cut through the bones. You can hear it just snapping right through. Sometimes you're gonna need a knife as well to help cut through some of the skin. We'll flip this around. All right, and there's the spine. Now that's the hardest part, but with a good pair of scissors, that's not a problem. Now, what you need to do is break the backside of that breastbone. I like to just take a nice sharp knife, give it a good whack, and you should be able to just grab it like this and split it open. Now the next thing that I like to do is go through and trim any of this garbage out of here. That's going to be excess fat, skin, anything of that nature, the tail. Now, take your paper towel, Dab all of the excess moisture out of the cavity. Make sure if you see any bone fragments that you might have made when spatchcocking this, make sure you get those out. You don't want to be eating any bone. And while we're back here, we might as well season it up. So I'm going to start with a little bit of duck fat spray. And I'm just going to do a quick little mist. Because we did a dry brine, we want to be careful with the amount of salt that we add with a rub. So today I'm going to be using the Grillaholics Herbaceous N. It's a good herb-based rub and isn't overly salty. Let's go ahead and get a nice coating on the back side of this turkey. Take the back side of my glove here and pat it in just to make sure that it's sticking. We don't lose it when we flip it. But let's go ahead and do so. Now take your paper towel, give it a nice little pat dry real quick, nothing crazy. Hit it with the duck fat spray again, just a quick little mist, and back at it with the herbaceous hen. Now that we've got it seasoned up, it's time to hit it with our injection. Now, I've worked on this injection for several years and I feel like I finally got it exactly how I like it. I will put a recipe down in the description, but this is a butter and spice and herb based injection. Get yourself an injector with a nice big wide tip. It's gonna help with any of those spices and seasoning so it doesn't get all clogged up. One big syringe full in the breast and we're gonna move it around like so. That way we're getting it all throughout that breast. Another stir and we're gonna hit the other breast. I also hit the thighs, give a couple pumps there. I do the drums as well. Get some juice down in there. Now today, I'm gonna to be smoking this on my gateway drum. We're gonna be hitting that with about 325 to 350 degrees. Got it loaded up with some Jealous Devil Lump Charcoal and some Applewood Chunks. Let's go ahead and get it on. All right, over here at the gateway drum, it is nice and warm right now. It's running about 340 degrees. 
we're gonna center this turkey right inside, giving it that nice spatchcock pose. If you messed up any of the seasoning, now's a good time to add it. But because we're running a live fire, let's get this lid closed before things get out of control. Now we're running with an ambient air probe so I can monitor the temperature of the smoker, but we're also going to run with a probe in the breast so that we can closely monitor the temperature of this turkey. We want this to run to about 165 degrees, and at a certain point, I'm gonna show you one additional step that you can do to make a beautiful and delicious turkey. But until we get to that point, grab yourself a beer, sit down and relax, because we do have some time. As you can see, the turkey is crisping up nicely. We've got a nice golden finish. And to help with that finish, and now that the rub is sticking to the surface, we're gonna brush some butter on it, and we're gonna continue to do this until we reach 165 degrees. All right, so this spatchcock turkey on the gateway drum is done. We're registering about 165 in both breasts. This thing cooked extremely evenly, and it cooked pretty quick. I mean, we're looking at about three and a half hours or so. We ran this thing most of the time about 325 to 350. It is extremely windy today. In fact, it's like 40 mile an hour gusts. So the temperatures on this thing are a little bit harder to maintain because of that, but it did very, very well. So let's go ahead and get this off. I like to use a spatula and some tongs. Take the probe out here. Get it over to the table we'll get it cut up give it a try this spatchcock turkey smoked on the gateway drum is ready to cut up and try let's go ahead and just quarter this out it cooked very very evenly in fact the breast was only about one degree different from one side to the other now you will see that a little bit of the rub came off and that was when i grabbed it with the tongs kind of hurt the presentation but it shouldn't hurt any of the flavor. I'm gonna go ahead and cut down into that breast. This is very, very hot. And we'll slice this up. It's very, very, very juicy. It's also very hot. Now remember, this is a dry brine. This is injected, a spatchcocked, and smoked on that drum. So this should be very, very tasty and very complex with the, with the flavors. Let's give it a try. The first thing that I notice is the rub. The perfect amount of everything. Very earthy, herbal taste, very juicy, not too much salt, and that's what you have to be careful with the, with the dry brine. That's the reason why we use something with a little lower salt when we actually season it. This is incredibly juicy. I mean, it is, it is extremely, extremely juicy. Now, I wanna try a piece without the skin. Now, see, everybody is always going to say, oh, you season the skin, you don't season the meat. You know, you're not getting any of the flavor in to penetrate through that skin. But we did inject it with my homemade injection. Recipe's down in the description. Let's give this breast meat with no skin a try. I will tell you right now that that rub penetrated nicely through the chicken breast. It is extremely juicy and extremely tasty, even down beyond the skin. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but look at how juicy that, that really is. In my opinion, this is one of the best ways to make a turkey. Granted, you don't get that Thanksgiving movie pose that you see, but it cooks evenly, is juicy, and is delicious. And if you want another delicious recipe, then I suggest you check out this video right here.